This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. What you just heard there was me having a go at the uh, Ronnie Wood solo from the classic Rod Stewart song, uh, Maggie May. For me, it's uh, the epitome of uh, what a guitar solo should be in many ways. It's simple, it's effective, it's memorable, and it serves the song. And, um, you know, it, it also has a special place in my heart because uh, it was possibly the first ever guitar solo I played professionally. Um, you know, when you're kind of a, a young man, which was many years ago for me, and you make that uh, transition from being, you know, playing in a, a hobby band just with your friends, at, like a school band it was for me, to going out there and playing in front of uh, people who aren't just friends and family and you know you, you're kind of earning a little bit of money from it as well well um that song maggie may was in the set that that band my first ever proper band uh played so it was possibly the first solo i ever played professionally i couldn't swear to it anyway i digress here's a little bit of an explanation about what's going on in the solo solo explanation Okay, it's a simple little solo, this, but there's still a couple of important things you can learn from it, and we'll cover those as we go through. But first of all, let's take a look at the chord sequence. Uh, there it is there. We'll have a listen to how that sounds in a moment, um, but I just want to raise the first point here. Um, you know, many people would look at that and say, oh, it starts on an E minor chord, and there's, you know, E minor has, you know, kind of a strong presence throughout it, so they would immediately start thinking in terms of... E minor pentatonic. Um, that's not what Ronnie Wood does, though, and here's why. If I just play through that chord sequence, you will notice something. Here we go. Do you notice how when you get to that D chord at the end, or when you arrive at any of the D chords that, that are you know present throughout the chord sequence, it always seems like it's it's reached a natural resting point. Okay, D major. We're in the key of D major here. What we've got are the uh, E minor, A, D, and G, or the two, the five, the one, and the four chords in the key of D. But just because something's in the key of D doesn't nat naturally follow that the D chord will be the chord where everything sounds complete, at rest, finished, resolved, whatever you want to call it. But in this case, it does. And it's that chord, what we call the tonality chord, the chord where everything sounds finished and at rest, that is the governing factor when you choose your pentatonic scale, if you're going to be playing with a pentatonic scale to play over the top of it. And even if you're playing with something more, you know, kind of um, complex than a pentatonic scale, a mode or something like that, you know by now that the way I view that kind of thing is it always as a core pentatonic scale plus some extra notes that you can add in. So that is the chord sequence. It's resolving to a D major chord. So he's using a D major pentatonic, specifically um, part of this run here, which I call the uh, the two plus three run because you're playing a repeating pattern of two notes on one string, then three notes on the next. And then that pattern repeats again, two notes, then three, then two notes, then three. So you get this. Mm -hmm. 
and you can see those arrows i've indicated on the diagram there where you're doing the kind of slidey stuff so that is the first important um point i want to raise about this solo don't just fall for that old wives tale of all you got to do is look at the first chord and match your pentatonic with that as you can see that doesn't uh, always work and that's not what's going on here so what have we got going on lead guitar wise here well as i said the d major pentatonic and we start with uh this little uh motif this hook this phrase which kind of recurs throughout the solo <laughs> Then we do a variation on that. Put those two together, you get... And then... Like that, it's starting to get recognisable now. So we've got a very strong melodic phrase there, okay? That kind of da 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 da. There is absolutely no concession here to targeting chord notes. Or, well, there probably is, but he's not, he's not doing it on purpose. He's just landing on them um, by you know, the law of averages. States that you know you will do um, if you're playing the right scale over the right chord sequence. You you will kind of end up landing on a strong chord note. But it's not something that I'm sensing that he's consciously doing. It's just this. Uh, <laughs> And then we take, like we saw, I think, in the um, when we looked at the Marillion uh, Cayley solo, he then takes that um, that kind of phrase that he starts off with, then moves it up an octave and plays it again, and does it again. Like that so you can hear where you've got like a structural part of the solo where it's and you can hear where he's just kind of noodling to, to fill up the space and just create some variety there um, after we've got that far what happens next is we go back to the then Again, all coming from that um, kind of run there. And then we do the, the higher octave version of that main structural um, motif, that hook. And then... And there's your solo complete. Okay, I'll go through the whole thing from start to finish nice and slow. It goes like this. So there you have it. That's what's going on in this really quite tuneful and uh, melodic little solo. Uh, there's nothing really here clever in terms of scales or note choices or anything like that. It's just relying on listening for which chord gives it its sense of resolution and the musical centre of gravity, if you like, the tonality. Match that with a pentatonic and have a good, strong, uh, melodic hook that you can uh, exploit there. And, you know, you heard throughout that solo how many times we heard the... That simple little motif there. It's a hummable, catchy little hook, and it really does make the solo. So, simple is sometimes 
the best option certainly is here. Now, go away and have some fun with it. And as always, you'll find a full tab in both Guitar Pro and PDF formats, along with a clip of me playing the solo, that explanation you've seen there, and a backing track for you to play along with for yourself. All of that is up on my Patreon page. There's the address, and the link is in the description. $3 or £2.50 a month gets you access to all of these additional resources that go along with these YouTube videos. A massive, massive heartfelt thank you to everyone who supports me in the, that or any of the other ways, all of which are also linked down in the description. And that is pretty much the video for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and found it useful in some small way. And if that's the case, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so. And why not give me a like while you're at it? Don't forget, as always, the live stream every Friday, 5 pm UK time. We have a beer and we talk about music and guitars. You know what we do. It's a great way to kick off the weekend. I'd love to see you there if you can make it. But for now, I'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Look Look after yourselves, folks. Stay well, stay safe, and above all, stay sane. Bye for now.